All right, today we're going to talk about how to progress through AFK Journey even quicker. I've played this game for about two weeks now, and this is how much I've progressed my account. Of course, some people might disagree with certain things I say, but hopefully I can still help you and just get you through the game. First of all, I want to mention this straight away. Guilds in this game are massively important. You want to be a part of an active one. If you're not part of an active one, you're going to struggle a lot more getting guild points. Currently, I'm in Beastars Guild. This guild is quite active in general, but if we go over to Guild Challenges, you will see what I mean. As you can see here, members completed with these certain tasks will give us points. Of course, as you can probably expect, if we have no members in the guild or if we have a very, very inactive guild, we won't be able to complete these. These points are very useful though. If we go over to the shop for the guild, first of all, we have a ticket here. This is very worth getting. It is crystals, but it is still worth getting in my opinion. We also have this. This is something that will probably be worth getting at some point as well. Basically allows you to get hypergenous celestial characters through Stargate Station. Not something I have unlocked yet, but this is pretty solid in general. But the best part is, is these characters. These are celestial hypergen characters. You can just straight up buy them through here. This is very, very good. And a big reason you want to be part of an active guild for the actual missions. If you get these celestial hypergen characters, these are very good because first of all, they don't take any faction. They can be, ba they basically come for any faction in the game. When you have several factions together, or for example, you have three light bearers together in the team, or you have three maulers in the team, you will get an extra bonus of attack and HP. These guys count for any faction, so you basically get the bonus easier. Of course, they are more difficult to get since you can't just normally summon them, but this is still something to talk about and it's still something very important that you want to be in an active guild for. Next up, we have AFK Progress. Now, this is probably one of your best ways to actually be sorted when you first start playing the game. Day one, make sure to not claim this at the bottom right here. The best thing you should do is claim it at the end of the day once you've done all the progress. And the main, very, very big thing is how do you actually get more points and like more gold, etc. through this? I'm going to collect this now because I don't plan to play at the moment. We collect that. Very nice. How do I actually get more of that? Because if I have 15 hours where I just had... You can actually go ahead and if we check this, basically all you need to do is progress through these AFK stages. For example, if I just bow here and I just bow this, I will be going up against AFK stage and the main goal really is to progress through the AFK stages as much as possible because you will get more AFK loot. With more AFK loot, you'll be able to get more loot, which will mean you'll be able to build characters more. It's pretty much that simple. Now I'm probably gonna lose this taking a look at this. Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Regardless, this is basically your little way of knowing how far you've gotten. The further you get, it's the better. And then you want to actually redeem your rewards at the end of the day. Oh, okay, so my day is going to end. I progress through the AFK stages as much as I can. Claim it, and there we go. Pretty simple, and that's just simply how it works. Of course, you can also use crystals. I would say it's generally worth it to start the game, but at the same time, you can also save it for summons. It depends how fast you want to progress. But moving on to something that's actually really interesting with characters this time around, if you have played AFK Arena or really any other AFK game, you'll find that a lot of the time you need dupes to actually make characters ascend, which is basically increase their rarity. As you can see here, my Cessia needs two dupes to be able to go to Legendary Plus. There is one that's taken into account in this game though. In this game, you actually need acorns as well. Acorns are basically a way of not needing dupes, but acorns are something you definitely want to hold on to the most that you can. You actually get acorns through summoning and you also get them through in battle mode. If we just go over to battle mode here, you also can get them through legend trial. At this moment in time, it's very difficult to get acorns and you don't really get much from this. As you can see, we get 10 on stage 15. Maybe we get another 10 on stage 25, that'd be my assumption, but you really don't get that many. And it's very important to know that you should probably be holding onto your acorns. If you do decide to use them, which I do think eventually you should, my best recommendation is actually to put it on your main DPS slash your main carry. The character's gonna be doing the most damage because if you ascend them, you will actually unlock exclusive equipment. Unfortunately, I don't have this feature unlocked since I do not have a mythic character yet, but you want to focus it on your DPS because if they do the most damage, if they have the generally higher stats, you will find the most benefit, especially as you can see here, once you ascend, you do also get way better stats like 89k HP to 100k. It's a big deal. Your main DPS, if he dies, then you might struggle a little bit more depending on your team as well. Also, there is also skill upgrades, which basically use actual materials for that. Of course, I can't just show it on this guy, but basically use these crystals here. I want to very quickly say, 
Also, try and hold on to this. I would recommend just holding on to some of your stuff, especially if you don't know who to build at the beginning of the game. But that does actually move me on to the next part, which is about elite heroes and epic heroes naturally. For example, if you take someone like Brutus, Brutus is naturally an epic hero. You actually get him through the pulls. But there is also like Valen, for example, who is a naturally elite hero. Elite is obviously for low rarity, which you can presume is easy to get. I want to only say that mainly because if you are going for elite heroes at the beginning and you have an elite carry slash main DPS, you will find a much easier time to upgrade them and make them better. That is very important, especially since if we take a look at the recruitment here, for example, we have all hero recruitment. This is actually a very easy way of getting elite heroes. You have a much higher chance of actually getting the character you might want through elite heroes. And there is a basically a wish list here as well. You have like basically eight characters for elite and eight characters for epic. Like I said before, though, the rates are pretty low on this one. If we do take a look at this one, though, you kind of get epic heroes a bit easier through here. This is, unfortunately, though, kind of more difficult to get. So overall, this kind of means that getting elite heroes is going to be a lot easier. Which my personal advice is, try and focus on elite heroes at the start of the game. Another great way of getting elite heroes is through the Dream Realm. Basically, Dream Realm is just a boss fight. If you do 100% of its HP, you will get a free character every day. This is amazing. At this moment in time, I'm not sure if they're going to change this, but this is very, very good. It gives you a random one, so you can't select. But with this, you can get extra dupes a lot easier. And every time you actually battle this, you also get these crystals. With these crystals you can go here and then you can get dupes for these characters this is actually quite easy to do and you can relatively easily get dupes for characters this way which is obviously great for your elite heroes there is also like an arena store which you can get dupes for epic heroes but actually getting the points for this is a lot more difficult and we can actually very quickly talk about arena arena to put simply is basically just going up against people's defenses if we take a look here Basically, an enemy has a defense and we have our attack. We attack them. If we win, we get points. And there's also like weekly rewards and daily rewards. So if we take a look at this, weekly rewards, depending on your rank, you will get more of these points. With these points, like I said, you can use them for actual dupes for epic heroes. But getting the points compared to the dream store is a lot more difficult. So overall, getting elite heroes is easier. And my point is, if you can actually focus on elite heroes as your main carry for your main DPS, you will find probably a lot more value at the start of the game. That's just my personal opinion. Let me know what you think of that, but that's my best advice to give because that's a big thing I can imagine people might not quite see, especially since epic heroes aren't usually the difficult ones to get in games like these. All right, I want to very quickly talk about Arcane Labyrinth because that's actually something that you want to make sure you're doing. This is basically a mode that resets every week and you can get these points which you can use here. These are very good for getting crystals. The best way I can really talk about this is to like simulate universe in Honkai Star Rail or like Abyss in Genshin with the actual rewards. Basically, you get this weekly and you get these rewards which are really, really good. To actually get these points, you basically have to play through this. The higher difficulty you do, the more points you can actually acquire. As you can see here, 1,200. And actually, as you play through higher difficulties as well, basically, you will unlock more of these. Currently, I'm on 1,700 because we are currently on, I believe, difficulty 4 and I've only done 3 now. So, once I start doing higher difficulties will unlock more ideally realistically you want to try and do the highest difficulty if you get 2700 every week you're going to begin considerably more crystals it's very important to do every week because missing out on this could actually kind of hamstring your account in a big way especially the beginning depending on when this game releases if this releases on like a saturday or something make sure to do this this is mega mega important now in terms of difficulty you can also get like first time rewards these are pretty good these are basically the actual summons we talked about before and we also have these soul stones which are basically used to get characters that are elite that's also another good way of getting elite characters by the way but basic gist make sure to do this i really want to talk about this because it's like mega important and it's probably something that people will forget to do and that does also bring me over to one more thing which is arena arena i shouldn't have to say this but i actually forget to do this myself make sure to do arena we've talked about this before i literally talked about it a moment ago but make sure to do this it's very easy to forget about it i actually do a lot of the time forget to do stuff like this so it's very important of course when there's guild content as well you want to try and do your guild content that is also very important but there is one more thing i want to talk about which i'm progressing through the story now 
In this game, of course, there are like missions, etc. So you can go to the missions here. The main thing you should probably be doing through the game, of course, is trying to do some of these side missions. The main story is going to be your best friend. You do unlock more stuff as you do the main story, especially at the beginning of the game. But doing other side story missions as well, just going through the towns, collecting chests as well. If you go to the map here, you actually see as exploration progress. You can find large chests. You can kind of check in the areas. You can get crystals as well once you actually get a certain percentage. Big advice. Make sure to try and find the chests. Make sure to actually do the side quests. Because even though the side quests aren't going to be ridiculously crazy, they're going to be very, very good, especially for crystals. This will all add up and help you progress in your account. And that's one of the main things I want to talk about. There is actually two more things I want to very quickly talk about, though. And we also have the battle pass here. Battle pass, pretty much like any other game, you want to try and do this as well. I mean, this is pretty simple stuff. If you played any game that's a gacha game, this is always worth doing. But there is also another thing that's worth doing, which is, of course, the daily quests. As you can see here, I've just done them through just playing a game. Very easy to do. You do get these purple essence um, hourglasses. Basically, they give you AFK essence, which you can use to actually upgrade your characters. This is going to be very, very useful. I do recommend not using this straight away in the game. I recommend using it further in as, as much progress as you can make and then use them. That's the best advice I can give there. Of course, the crystals, like I said, very, very nice. And we also have some stuff like the growth trials. I don't really focus on this, but of course, this is kind of nice to do for a little bit of items here. We also have the growth path, which is ridiculously good, especially if you want to get some of these rewards like this. This is actually a pretty good way of getting epic heroes. And we also have some other equipment chests. Now, if you are also looking for more guild points in the game, there is also more ways of getting them through the actual guild quests. This is pretty simple as well. You just have to challenge an arena. It's like enter dream realm. It's just a couple battles here and there. Of course, if your guild isn't very active, doing this could potentially get you at least past it where you don't really need a mega active guild. But that is kind of something to take into account, really. Anyway, that pretty much covers everyone's top about this video. I try to offer a bit of information, kind of go a little bit more deeper than I usually go in my videos because I tend to kind of edit my videos very hard. This time around, I just try to offer all the information I can. If you did find this helpful, please do leave a comment down below. That actually helped me out a lot in knowing if this is actually what people want to see. Of course, this is a sponsored video to a sense, so I do want to mention that, but I regardless do like this game. I have actually played it for two weeks, and honestly, it's been a lot of fun. I think some people will enjoy this game. I've heard some people say, why is this game actually more worth playing over AFK Arena? To be honest, I actually do think it's more worth playing mainly because this will this is just a very nice game. Like this looks this is a very, very pretty game. You could pass AFK Arena. It looks miles better. There's a story. There's a lot more to generally do. And I think overall in the game's future, this game is gonna be set up to do a lot of stuff that listen, this game isn't even released yet and it's very good. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, thank you for watching. I will see you next one. And most importantly, have a wonderful day. Adios.